You're watching Twin Tiers Sunday with Renata Steele. Hello and welcome to Twin Tiers Sunday. I'm Renata Steele with WENY HD News and this week we are learning more about a new ish, new ish, I guess it's been in the works for a while, but kind of new to me, a community organization called Don't Underestimate Elmira. And it's exactly that. It's a group that really wants to set out to highlight all the good that there is in Elmira and let people know that there is so much to appreciate and celebrate and, you know, just marvel in Elmira because it's so rich in history and there are so many good things going on here. So I want to introduce the Reverend Felicity Wright from the Park Church in Elmira and Jenny Monroe, who's a community volunteer with yes. Don't Underestimate Elmira. So I want to thank the both of you for coming on the show and talking about what I think is really a wonderful effort uh, that's mm -hmm. underway. But first, we want to learn a little bit more about th this effort. Um, and it started, Felicity, really with you. Um, it, all I think all great things start with an idea, mm -hmm. and that's how this kind of got underway. Yes. Uh, I came to Elmira uh, three years ago after living most of my life in Washington, D.C. and Berkeley, California. And the Park Church is a national landmark. It's got a history uh, that is known throughout the country for its progressive work with the Underground Railroad, with uh, John Jones, with the abolitionist movement, and then Beecher. But I was amazed by so much else that it was happening, mm -hmm. that had happened in Elmira. And what a, what a beacon it was in so many ways. Learning about the Langdons, learning about mm -hmm. Mark Twain, learning about John Lewis and John Jones. And I'm, I'm sort of blown away that in all the places I've lived throughout the world, I don't think I've ever come across as many heroes per square mile as I found in Elmira. And yet I'm also dealing with a sense of malaise, mm -hmm. a sense of defeatism, and I'm trying to figure out where that comes from. And of course, I'd been told about the flood. Who hasn't been told about the flood? <laughs> uh, in fact, I was working uh, just outside New York um, at the time of the flood and uh, remember it really quite well. But I was also surprised that in the 40 years since the flood, it seems like Elmira had, had sort of retreated into mm -hmm. itself in a way that wasn't healthy. And, I, I, and I'm struggling with this and I'm you know, learning about Corning and going to Ithaca and meeting wonderful people who are really trying to make a difference in the world in some positive ways, and, and realizing that Elmira has so many treasures. It's not just the heroes of the past, but there were also present heroes. Mm -hmm. in, in six we months of being here, I met three Jefferson Award winners. I met all the people with the YWCA and how th what they do, uh, and, I, and I'm blown away by people who want to make a positive difference mm -hmm. in the world, at the same time that I'm very troubled by so many people who sort of have victim written all over their mm -hmm. chest. Mm -hmm. And all these ideas are sort of ruminating, um, and I'm thinking about the 40 years from the flood, and then it sort of hits me. 40 years. 40 years in the Bible is a really big deal. <laughs> a really big deal. Uh, the Israelites wandered 40 years in the wilderness. Uh, Jesus was 40 days uh, in the wilderness. Uh, there are many other, uh, Jonah was 40 days in the, in the belly of the whale. Gosh, if I remember that right. I <laughs> uh, <laughs> but then it turns out that 40 is one of these symbolic mm -hmm. numbers that represents both grace and renewal. And if you talk to numerologists, like, like the people who wrote the Da Vinci Code, you know, <laughs> we don't know about numerology. So they have all these wonderful explanations. 40 was also, 40 years was also a lifetime. Mm -hmm. So what was going on with the 40 years in the wilderness was that it takes a lifetime to stop looking backwards to the good old days of luxury in Egypt 
and to start uh, looking forward to what we might be. Uh, if you plot the course that the Israelites took, it probably, at worst, would have taken six weeks. And that's with all the cows and the goats and the children and the lambs and everything else. Uh, why did it take 40 years and not six weeks? It took 40 years for them to rethink who they were and the kind of possibilities mm -hmm. and create a new identity for who they were. And so I look at Elmira and I'm saying, this is the time. Mm -hmm. Now also as a minister, I know that individuals, churches, communities, all have a healthy side and a shadow side. And the, the problem is when we don't recognize the difference. Elmira has such a healthy side. Mm -hmm. it, has, it has the, the vision of empowerment and possibility and opportunity. The Underground Railroad, John Jones, Mark Twain, the Langdons, so many others creating a new life mm -hmm. uh, and giving people power. At the same time that it has a shadow side, which I would say is represented by Helmira and the prison mm -hmm, camps mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and by the poverty and the sense of entrapment. I live uh, downtown and many of the families near me seem to think that the, you know, they feel trapped in Elmira. Uh, there aren't enough good jobs. Um, there isn't enough uh, unemployment. There's too much poverty. There's too much drug use. There are too many uh, babies out of wedlock. So they feel trapped in that. And I have to say, that you attract what you lead with. Mm -hmm. And for the last 40 years, we've been leading with our shadow side, that sense of being trapped. Um, we need to turn that around to lead with our healthy side, mm -hmm. which is the empowerment. All of the examples uh, in history and currently of people who are ready to create opportunities and make a difference and claim our God-given gifts Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, so it's not just don't underestimate Elmira, it's don't underestimate the spirit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think no matter what faith you may follow, a lot of people can agree that there are things that e anyone can do to not only better themselves but better their community. Absolutely. Exactly. And Elmira has more uh, per square mile than anywhere else I've lived, and I've lived <laughs> in lots of places. <laughs> But we don't talk about them. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's... And so our young people never learn about mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Well, that's exactly what we're here to do today is have mm -hmm. a conversation about moving Elmira forward. Correct. And we're going to continue that conversation in our next segment of Twin Tier Sunday. So please stay tuned. Twin Tier Sunday will return in a moment. Welcome back to Twin Tier Sunday. I'm Renata Steele. I'm talking with Reverend Felicity Wright and Jenny Monroe. They are here to talk about a community group called Don't Underest Underestimate Elmira. Now, the last segment we learned about, you know, Jen or Felicity, you came to Elmira. You're a set of fresh eyes, a new person in our community, and really um, getting to see both sides, the historical side that we continue to celebrate, but also this other side with, that doesn't have such a rosy picture. And right. um, for someone, I didn't grow up in Elmira, but I, I'm, I am from the area. And I think that that's the side that we mm -hmm. hear about too mm -hmm. much um, mm -hmm. from a news perspective. Mm -hmm. Every time um, there seems to be something bad happening, whether it's a, you know, a drug bust or a shooting, the thing that I'm noticing the most is you talk to people and they're like, oh, well, that's Elmira for you. Right. Exactly. That's right. And um, what you are trying to set out to do is saying, no, that's not Elmira for you. Mm -hmm. it, Elmira mm -hmm. is more than that. Right. And really want to get out all that is positive about mm -hmm. Elmira. And now, Felicity, you talked about where the idea for this group came from, but how do we really get the ball rolling with this group and it seems to be growing mm -hmm. um, day by day. <laughs> we hope so. We hope so. Uh, you know, I got the idea and I was talking with some other folks at the Park Church and then talking with other 
clergy colleagues, uh, including uh, the Jewish rabbi and uh, representatives from the black churches and Lutherans and, and uh, Episcopalians, and then connected with Jenny Monroe from STIC, the Southern Tier Interfaith Coalition. And so it just, it was sort of like a, a gently bubbling pot. Mm -hmm. And, you know, being fresh to the community, people pushed back saying that you're seeing things way too black and white um, <laughs> and that it's much more nuanced. Uh, and, and of course that's true. You know, the, 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 you have the gift of fresh eyes and you also have the curse of idiocy or <laughs> ignorance or something like that. Um, and so it was definitely a work in progress. But we began to have meetings and brainstorming just what could and could not be done. And some of the ideas were way uh, bigger than we could do right away. Um, but especially the youth educational things, uh, be because of Jenny, I think, uh, really took off. Mm -hmm. And with the support of Stick, they mm -hmm. really took off. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still a it's still a big idea, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a big idea with just little things bubbling up. It's, it's a grassroots movement, yeah, I would say, and, mm -hmm. and, and we're trying to get a, a diverse group of people to come together and express their wishes. Mm -hmm. I think apathy is the hardest thing that we're working against. So mm -hmm. how do you, how does a community battle apathy? You, you need information, so let's make sure everybody does know the amazing things that have happened, mm -hmm. especially in this 150th anniversary of the Civil War. Yes. We wanted to make sure people know the amazing, fabulous story about John Jones. Mm -hmm. And if you're not familiar, uh, you know, he had such an important role in the treatment of the Confederate soldiers, you know, mm -hmm. those who had died yes. in this area, you know, he made sure that they were laid to rest with respect mm -hmm. and, you know, played such a, a, mm -hmm. a role in the, the, the growth in the history of this community. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, also was the conductor on the Underground Railroad. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was very involved in making sure that the hundreds and hundreds of, of African American slaves that passed through Elmira got to safety. Yes. And because he was a former slave, a lot of people are amazed when they hear that story. Mm -hmm. They say, here you have a former slave who settled in Elmira, and that was not that unusual, but would take the job to bury all these Confederate boys as they died mm -hmm. at the prison camp with such grace and such respect and such um, uh, compassion. Uh, How can I, that happen? I, yeah. I call him a Christ figure, mm -hmm. to love your enemies after they've mistreated you so badly. Mm -hmm. Elmira needs to claim that, mm -hmm. the power of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, sorry. That's, no, it's okay. Um, so uh, well, my job, like Felicity's new eyes, mine are old eyes. I've been here for 35 years and have been very involved in both Elmira and Corning and the history and the museums and other things. And my job right now is to take people who live in other places and I take them on little tours with Road Scholar and we go through and I tell the John Jones story and we visit the Twain monuments and, and burial ground and we talk about Quarry Farm and we talk about the Park Church and all and many other places but those are the Elmira sites and when they hear that story of John Jones they say that is the quintessential American story. Mm -hmm. That is the irony mm -hmm. that talks so much about our history um, and uh, we need to get this out there. And I know that the John Jones Museum has you know, moved the building mm -hmm. and it's working on opening it and that's fabulous. Um, but I think we can also tell stories. You know, nobody ever learns anything in this world unless it's through a story. Mm -hmm. And we have so many stories to tell in Elmira. Mm -hmm. We've done a good job about telling the Mark Twain story and mm -hmm. the Langdon family. And you see you know, all the signage around and people can find their way and that's great. Um, and then what are the other stories that we need to mm -hmm. tell? And now my question is, is that we have this rich history and we, we have these wonderful stories, but when do we start, you know, rewriting our own history mm -hmm. and turning Elmira's perception around and getting the community on mm -hmm. board? And you've got a, a couple goals in mind that you would like to do, mm -hmm. and it, it's, I think it's baby steps, <laughs> yes, um, it but really those are those steps that you have to take to make right. progress. Mm -hmm. And I think it starts with the children. And that's why we have such an uh, initiative for making sure that youth growing up in Elmira know about the heroes, 
who they are. They can tell the stories. Um, and it, because we want to focus on not only civic engagement in the process, but pride. Mm -hmm. Pride in our community, which I think is what will battle that apathy that we're feeling. You know, I, I tell people that Mark Twain, before Elmira and after Elmira, was as dramatic a conversion as Saul becoming Paul on the road to Damascus. Mm -hmm. Here was this Jesus hater who became the one of the key, he, with Peter, became the founders of the church. It was the blinding light where he saw the light. Mm -hmm. That, I mean, when you, when you look at Mark Twain before getting to know John Jones, John Lewis, the Langdons, Elmira, the Beechers, Park Church, so many others, it's quite mm -hmm. a list, and after, and then becoming the great social commentator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Elmira should be so proud of that. Mm -hmm. We should claim mm -hmm. it from the yeah. rooftops. Right. Mm -hmm. We're the pressure cooker yeah. under which a lot yeah. of these individuals changed and had their moment. I mean, John Jones, can you imagine what a transformation it must have been for him in his lifetime to come around to the hero that we now look at him as? Absolutely. Terrific. Mm -hmm. And now, Jenny, you had mentioned that uh, a lot of this can start with the children yes. in our community yes. and there's a, a program coming up where you're trying to reach out right. to kids get that involved mm -hmm. so we want to learn about that in our final segment of Twin Tier Sunday so please stay with us. Twin Tier Sunday will return in a moment. Welcome back. We've been talking about Don't Underestimate Elmira, a community group that involves uh, different um, faith leaders from our community, but also people who are, you know, concerned citizens. Um, and it could be you. You can get involved with Don't Underestimate Elmira, and we're going to tell you how you can learn more towards the end of the segment. Um, but I'm joined now here by Kathleen Deary, who joins Jenny. And Jenny, we talked real briefly, just touched on getting the youth involved yes. and by targeting the youth in the community really can help change this perception of Elmira. Revision Elmira exactly. is the, the term that you're using and you've got some programs coming up um, in the month of August to reach out to, to kids and um, I'd like Kathleen and Jenny for you to talk about the, the concept behind this program. Good, okay, thank you. Um, we wanted to find heroes living today, people in Elmira who are great storytellers and who can bring um, some positive energy, cultural activities to an audience. So where would, you, what would you, where would you do it in August? Of course you would do it on Thursdays at Wisner Park, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a wonderful community gathering place. So we have two Thursdays um, picked out coming up in August um, on the 14th and on the 29th. And the 29th is actually the last Wisner Park event, so mm -hmm. very important. And two wonderful storytellers. One is Vicey Rowland, who is an African-American storyteller. She does a lot of work in the schools. And she's going to tell the story of this amazing person named Lear Green, who was a woman, African-American slave, who packed herself in a trunk and sent herself on the Underground Railroad. And she ends up meeting John Jones wow. in Elmira. So um, just a great story. And uh, on the 29th, one of our amazing heroes, and as I call him, the second most famous writer in Elmira, after Mark Twain, Ted Arnold, mm -hmm. who is a phenomenal um, uh, children's book author yeah. and illustrator, and uh, is, is you know nationally known, and he lives right here. He loves Elmira, raised his family here. And he's going to come and talk about what it's like to be an author in the 21st century mm -hmm. in Elmira. And, um, and we'll have some of his books, and he'll talk about how he develops his characters. And I think it'll just be really fun. So these are programs aimed at the youth, mm -hmm. but open to family audiences, intergenerational audiences. We want grandparents there. And that's why we're tagging with the Wisner Park event. Mm -hmm. They will be held right inside the Park Church, which borders Wisner Park. So we're just going to open the doors and say, y'all come in at 1 o'clock um, and have a little performance, and then have a little question and answer. And let the children guide the questions and mm -hmm. answers because we want to know what they do know, what their questions are, what they need to know. So then we can 
start working on some other programs mm -hmm. once we gauge. We're also trying to get teachers involved, which is why Kathleen is so valuable to our group, because teachers are often the connection between families and local history. Right. And now, so, Kathleen, right now you teach college students, but you mentioned to me that you've really taught a whole span age. of ages. Mm -hmm. And so I'm sure you can attest to the importance of reaching out to these kids when they're young, because what they learn and the, the, their community environment can really have such a, a role in how they are shaped as they go to adulthood. Absolutely. Um, uh, Jenny pulled me in because she knows I'm passionate about education. Yes. And in, in a sense, I suppose I have even older eyes than either of these mm -hmm. because I'm actually a fourth generation Elmiron. Mm -hmm. um, I was away as a young adult and chose to come back here to raise my family. And so I've been involved in education here all these years in a n number of different ways. And what's really important to me is to make sure that we're not only um, letting kids know about both our historic heroes and our current heroes, but also making sure that they become very actively involved. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be introducing them to people. We want to right away, even at these beginning sessions, make sure that they, in at least small ways, do activities and become actively involved mm -hmm. so that they start to see that that they're the heroes of the future, and yes. they're some of the people that can um, make the many difficult situations in Elmira better. Mm -hmm. and Civic that's what engagement we really do. is yes. just, you know, starting at that level can really have such an impact, maybe not immediately realized, but down the road. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Very important. We want to um, hear from anyone who has ideas. As, as I talked about at the last segment, it's really still in the grassroots formation. Mm -hmm. We want people that have ideas, if they're positive, if they're possible, um, uh, and, and one of the things that we've been excited about is uh, Felicity built a, or no, it was you, wasn't it, Kathleen, who built us a Facebook page. And we've gotten a lot of impact on that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we're kind of between technologies right now. I'm still in the old school. Thank goodness there's some people who really know how to use this social media. But what a great way to bounce an idea mm -hmm. and then other people read it and comment it, on it. So, um, you know, don't underestimate Elmira is, is our Facebook page. and. It came from a meeting where someone wrote on a flip chart, you know, Elmira's do, and we were thinking of, you know, do for recognition, do for a new facelift, do, do, and I looked at the word do and I said, don't underestimate Elmira. So I took mm -hmm. apart that word and that's how it kind of, you know, because it was perfect. Mm -hmm. We don't want to underestimate Elmira. Too many people are doing that. Right, and there's so much to celebrate about Elmira, and mm -hmm. the Facebook page is actually how I learned about your organization. Oh, that's right. You know, you just, mm -hmm. you're tooling along on Facebook <laughs> and you end up stumbling upon a page. And, you know, I, before that, just this week, I didn't know mm -hmm. about this organization. So I was happy to, you know, find out about that and reach out to you and hear back. Um, and so, um, Kathleen, tell me a little bit about the Facebook page. And all you really need to do is look up Don't Underestimate Elmira mm -hmm. on Facebook. And you can like the page. It'll start right. showing up in your feed. Beautiful. And what can people expect to see from the Facebook page? Well, as, um, as we get information about events, we're putting all that sort of information right. on there. But another function of the Facebook page, um, uh, Don't Underestimate Elmira wants to run some of its own programs. But we also really want to collaborate with other groups. There are yes. a lot of people in Elmira yes. that are doing some really interesting and excellent things. And we want to connect with them. At a recent meeting, we met with the new teen coordinator at the um, Steel Memorial Library, the mm -hmm. main branch. And that's a new position. And she's starting a teen group. And so there's another positive thing that's happening in Elmira. Mm -hmm. So another thing we're highlighting in that page is some of the other local groups and some of the things that they're doing. So that's also yeah. sort of a clearinghouse for those kinds of events as well. Yeah, and it's a good way to get the word out there because not everyone subscribes to the paper. Not everyone watches the news every night. We know that. But uh, the, our community these days is so technologically connected and I think mm -hmm. Facebook is such mm -hmm. a great way to reach such a wide audience mm -hmm. and let people know hey this is what's happening you know you got kids this events coming up and yep. you know different things that are going on it's really such a great tool mm -hmm. and it really doesn't take a whole lot of effort to reach right. out that way mm -hmm. right and, and it's and it's active and kids like to use it too mm -hmm. they may not have a Facebook page but you know if it's computer if it's connected with computers and the internet they're right there Mm -hmm. You know, it's not old-fashioned and old history and, yeah, blah, you know. Yeah. So it's, it's a very pro proactive way to get the word out, especially to our target audience. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Jenny and Kathleen, I want to thank you for talking about Don't Underestimate Elmira and Reverend Felicity Wright, of course, who's uh, standing here and watching <laughs> our last segment. Again, on Facebook, just look up Don't Underestimate Elmira. They're doing wonderful things in our community and really working to turn that perception around. And I think all you really need to do is look around just a little bit and you can see the good that is in Elmira. And Absolutely. don't let the, 
the negative things overshadow all the good that there is in this community. So I want to thank you for joining us for this week's Twin Tier Sunday. We hope you have a wonderful day.